Today the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Listen, welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Listen, I've been blessed over the past couple of weeks dealing with uh, the subject, dealing with disappointments of the book of Numbers chapter 14. I hope it has been a blessing to you. If you have not listened to parts one and two, please go back and get the whole series, the whole lesson, and I guarantee God will speak to you and he will show you how you can live an abundant life. Let's pray. God, again, we are grateful that we are free to call upon your name. We are grateful that you loved us so much that you gave to us your son, Jesus the Christ. And so, God, since you've called us out of darkness into your marvelous light, we can walk in the freedom which only you can give us. Bless our time together in your word. In Jesus' name, we ask it all. Amen. Dealing with disappointment, our disappointments, part three, Numbers chapter 14. We've been looking at God promised Israel uh, that they would get into the promised land. He sent spies to, to check out the land and the spies came back with a negative report. Uh, and so Israel found themselves very disappointed. They found themselves hurt and broken and they were just in a mess. They even wanted to go back to Egypt. They complained against God. They complained against Moses. They complained against Aaron. And yet God wanted them to see the land is already yours. Thank God for Moses. Thank God for Joshua and Caleb who understood that if we take God at his word, God will deliver us. And so here we are on last week, we talked about three things. Uh, disappointments are delays, disappointments are educational, and disappointments are times of adjustments. You have to learn to adjust to certain situations, and we can do that not by our own power, but by the power of God. So let's not get weary in well-doing, but we're going to adjust and do that which is right that which is pleasing in the sight of our God. All right, Numbers chapter 14. I want to read uh, verse 8 today. And this is uh, Joshua talking to Israel. If the Lord delights in us, if the Lord delights in us, he will give us, or he will bring us into this land and give it to us a land which flows with milk and honey. Verse 9, only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. Their protection has departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. And all the congregation said to stone them with stones, now the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of meetings before all the children of Israel. So Israel, uh, again, Joshua, Caleb, they try to be the voice of reason. Joshua says in verses 8 and 9, listen, God will bring us into this land. The land is for us. It's a prosperous land. It's a land full of abundance. The scripture says a land that flows with milk and honey but we can't rebel against god and so often we miss our blessings because we are rebelling against the lord and we are fearing people who god has already given to us already put into our hands the bible says that god will make your enemies your footstool, and yet so often we miss this. I love what Joshua says in verse number nine. For they are our bread. Oh my gosh. God is giving your enemy and making your enemy your bread. For they are our bread. Their protection has departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear. So maybe 
you are experiencing uh, disappointments today uh, in your life because you're not seeing the power of God. Every time I look at this scripture, I get excited because we have to see God moving. So let me, let's go to number point four. Uh, let's go back. Number one, disappointments are delays. Number two, disappointments are educational. They can teach us something. Number three, disappointments are times of adjustments. Number four, disappointments are pace setters. What does that mean? Disappointments are pace setters. Uh, when you look at track and field, if you ever ran track, uh, when it's particularly in distance races, particularly the mile or maybe the two mile, sometime the quarter, uh, we, we had what we call on the track team a rabbit. And a rabbit meant if you were running a mile, one guy would take off as fast as he could to get the pace started. He wouldn't finish the race, but his role was to get up, go out there, get at a good pace, and you can drop out. But the real runners would continue at a pace that was comfortable, but it was also a pace that allowed them to get in their rhythm as a runner and uh, eventually win the race. And when you think about disappointments, sometimes uh, disappointments can be used as a time to set a pace in our lives where we can be consistent in our walk. Um, sometimes we need both physical healing and spiritual healing. What does this have to do with anything? Well, when you understand that we're often hurt emotionally, we're often hurt spiritually, when you don't believe that can happen to you as a believer, you will never get out of disappointment. So even in the church, and we talked about this in 2019, I taught a series on uh, the church life cycle and how there are ups and downs, there are peaks and valleys, and, and, and as, as a church, sometimes we get to a place where we plateau. Um, plateaus can sometimes be a disappointment for a pastor because as a, as a leader, we want the church to continue to move up and up and forward and forward and do that which... Uh, we are called to do. But even in a plateau, we could change our thinking and ask God to give us new vision or new direction that we could continue to move the church forward. Well, if we're not careful, many times as leaders, people lead not from God, not from the Holy Spirit. They lead from their ego. And they never get to the place God wants them to get because they didn't look at that disappointment as a time to change direction or to change their pace. And they find themselves in a decline because they didn't see the disappointment as a time to adjust and change their pace. Maybe you are feeling burnt out and overwhelmed in your life because you're moving at the wrong pace. When when Israel heard the negative report, they wanted to retreat and go back to Egypt, to go back into slavery, to go back into bondage because they didn't use the disappointment of not getting to the promised land immediately to regroup and to set a new pace. And that pace should have been, we need to trust God fully and believe God totally that whatever he says he will do, he will do. And so they never got to the point where uh, they moved into God's promise. Instead of moving into God's promise, they moved into man's complaining and man's whining. Listen, as believers, stop whining so much about what's gone wrong and let's look at what God is doing right. Don't focus on the negative. Focus on the promise. Focus on God's power. Focus on God's anointing. Focus on the fact that whatever God says will come to pass. So use your disappointment sometimes as a time of recalibrating, setting a new pace in your life in your faith, in your walk, 
in your talk, in your praise, in your worship. Set a new pace. Number five, disappointments are necessary. What do you mean, preacher, disappointments are necessary? Disappointments are necessary because disappointments forces us to trust in God. Disappointments will show you that you're not as strong as you think you are. Some Oftentimes we talk about how great our faith is, but when trouble comes, we fall apart. No, 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 no. Disappointments are necessary because disappointment takes us out of our ego. They, takes us, they take us out of our own way. And we're often in our own way. And it allows us and necessary because disappointments will give us a better witness and a stronger testimony of the goodness of God. And because God got to the point in the story where he told Moses, I'm going to wipe them out. And so Moses had to intercede for Israel and say, God, if you, if you kill all of us in the wilderness, you kill these people in the wilderness, our enemies will say that you were not able to bring your people into the land of promise. They've heard about the Red Sea experience. They've heard about how Pharaoh and his army drowned chasing not your, your children. So don't, don't take us out, Lord. Don't, don't do that yet. We, we, we're going we're gonna to get it together. I need you, God, to, to change your ways as far as you want to take us out. Uh, and so you don't, want, you don't want the enemy to think you're not able. He said, I know you're able, but I, look, at verse, look at verse 19 of chapter 14, Numbers. Pardon the iniquity of this people. Moses is praying, pardon the iniquity of this people. I pray according to the greatness of your mercy. And just as you, just as you have forgiven this people from Egypt, even until now. Then the Lord said, I have pardoned according to your word. So God said, okay, Moses, I'm not going to take them out. Uh, yes, they're, they're talking about me. They're complaining. But because of your word, Moses, I'm not going to take them out right now. So uh, whether or not you've learned anything in your disappointment, whether or not you've made some necessary adjustments, whether or not uh, you have changed your pace, you have to know that disappointments are necessary because disappointments causes us not to trust in who we are, but to trust in our God. So they are necessary. And just like the weather comes, the good weather, the bad weather, but we need rain to allow our plants to grow. We need sun. Uh, we need all of that. The ups and the downs of life, they only make us better. They only make us stronger. And then uh, number six, we need to look at disappointments are normal. If your life is disappointment-free, praise God. But even Jesus said, in this world, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So we will experience disappointments. And don't take disappointments, all of them. Don't take all of them personally. Don't take them all personally. Even though it is personal, don't think that God has a vendetta against you. Uh, that's normal. Uh, listen, when things go wrong in your life, it does not mean that God is out to get you. Quit blaming God for everything that goes wrong. God is not out to get you. If you love the Lord, if you walk in his ways, if you're faithful to God, he's not out to get you. He loves you. And just, so life will bring ups and downs, highs and lows. You will feel sometimes you're on a roller coaster. But that's normal. That's okay. They will, disappointments will come. Disappointments will go. Disappointments will happen. Uh, but we have to not let disappointments have a negative impact on on our lives. Listen, let me say this in closing. In the midst of disappointments, we have to understand several things. Number one, God is in control. God is in control. No matter how difficult life is. Number two, God sometimes uses our disappointments to turn our hearts toward him. 
Number three, God will comfort his people. If you're, if you're disappointed, God will comfort you. Number four, God uses disappointments as a witness of his sufficiency. Anybody know that God is sufficient? He uses our disappointments as a witness of his sufficiency. And then finally, number five, Jesus is our strength and refuge in good times and in bad times. So you are able to deal with disappointments. If you understand what we talked about over the last three weeks, disappointments are delays. Disappointments are educational. Disappointments are times of adjustments. Disappointments, number four, are pace setters. Number five, disappointments are necessary. And number six, disappointments are normal. We hope these lessons